let's say that we're playing over a backing track. This one right here happens to be kind of a kind of a funky blues thing. But a fusion, it could be any style, it really doesn't matter, as long as you have drums in there. Because that's gonna help you carry the, the beat. So typically if we have something like this, this is G minor pentatonic. Um, first position of the G minor pentatonic, the one that we all kind of know. Um, what we can do is use that first position, right? Two notes per string. And typically when we have to play, well, we kind of go back to our musical vocabulary that we have, all the licks and things like that, and that's what we do. It's, it's okay, but it sounds kind of like something that you took and that you kind of like stuck on top of the thing. It's not a, a super uh, coherent experience. It's like I'm playing something over this. I mean, you're not really part of it. And the glue that will glue everything together is the rhythm thing. And I call this the, like the, uh, the train track technique. In my mind, as I'm listening to this, I'm imagining a train that is going on. So I've got the backing track that'll give us the tempo, other information too, like the key, the scale and stuff like that. But I'm really focusing on the rhythm. So that's our beat. And imagine a train, like a, a train that keeps going on the road. Those are the rails that you hear with the wheel. Or whatever it is, but you keep going, right? 16th notes is my to-go rhythm uh, division. Because that's part of my vocabulary, I guess. I'm comfortable with that. 16th notes is four notes per beat, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If that's too fast, use eight. The idea is to have something super consistent in the back of your mind. This is going to be your guide. Now let's talk about scales just a little bit. So I'm assuming most of us are, are pentatonic players. That's where we start with. If we take the first position of the, that minor pentatonic scale, we have two notes per string, right? So we're in G here. And that first position being frets three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six. That scale is going to be the, the one we're gonna use throughout the improvisation, but we're gonna to tie to this the train track technique, the teka 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 teka. Now, if we play these 16th notes over a scale pattern that looks like this, the pentatonic scale, it's gonna be difficult. Because we have here, the, the way this is built, this position is built, this first position or G minor pentatonic is two notes per string. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So if we want to create a series of notes and not just repeat the same two notes over and over, we're going to have to do a lot of string skipping, right? My right hand, it's a little bit difficult. It's a lot of movement. It's feasible, but it's still a lot of movement. And whenever uh, there's a part of your body that is engaged in a process, in this case, alternate picking, well, that takes a little bit of, of your concentration away. And when you improvise, uh, I think the, the best approach is to approach it like uh, a conversation. You're having a conversation and you don't want to overthink about technical things. When I'm talking to you, I'm hopefully, well, I'm a very bad example. I was gonna say, I use words that I know. No, you've seen my videos before, I don't. <laughs> but typically you should, right? If I'm, if I'm sitting down with a friend, I'm not worried about, uh, about rules of grammar and things like that. I just speak. It should be the same with uh, when you improvise. And when you're improvising with a technique that is maybe a little bit difficult, like that alternate, for me it's a little difficult. I'm not an alternate picking player. So this, that's hard for me. It's not very natural. So, because we're using this that's a lot of notes to fill in between beats, right? That's four notes per beat. And that will require, again, stuff like that, very mechanical. So what we're gonna do is look at this scale 
and this works with any scale, but we're, we're considering a, a pentatonic scale. And if I look at the, the visual of that scale, that first position of the G minor pentatonic scale, again, we have two notes per string. These notes are part of the scale, which means that any of these notes you land on, it's a safe note. So you can land on any of these notes. It's fine, right? This one is fine too. This one is too. Any note of the pentatonic scale, it's going to be a, a safe note. Right? I want you to think of these notes as joints. Joints, like body joints. Like right here, I've got one. I've got one right here. A wrist. I've got, I've got joints. In between these joints, between my elbow and my wrist, you know, those are the, the connection points. Those are the notes of your scale. In between, I have a bunch of different things, right? I have muscles, hopefully. I have skin, I have, I have all, tendons, all these things that make the connection between these two joints. Let's add muscles, flesh, tendons in between these different joints. We're gonna go the easy way, okay? If we look at this pentatonic scale, I have a note on my left side. When I'm looking at my guitar, not you, but your right, which is my left. Left, right, left, right, left, right. We're gonna make the connection between the left note and the right note by filling in, joining these two joints together. Like that. So I have four notes here on that sixth string. On the next one, three, five is the pentatonic. I will have three possible notes. Three notes, three, four, make sense? And four. I'm just filling in the gaps. Okay, so the scale is a little bit fuller. Now, some of these notes, especially the joints, well, again, are safe, right? You might have put the tonic scale right? The notes in between, the flesh, the muscle, and all that, uh, they're not all safe. I keep you land on this one. Uh, oh my gosh, what is going on? No? Ah, uh, yuck. Right, some of these notes are disgusting, but that's okay. Because remember the train track technique? It keeps going. So now if I play this scale with the train track thing, it's gonna to start to sound a little fuller, a little more interesting. Okay? It sounds a little more interesting. It's still pentatonic based. The joints are the notes of the pentatonic scale. In between, we added stuff. We made it a little fuller. This is perfect with the train track technique thing. Almost kind of like a beboppy thing where it's, uh, you know, those, those sax bebop players, very, um, very swingy 16th notes. I can't do it, but think Charlie Parker, things like that. Very rhythm guided, train track guided. <laughs> That's how I think of it. So we basically um, made that, we chromaticized the minor pentatonic scale in a way. We added some chromatic notes. Chromatic passage between two notes are all the possible notes in between. Some of these notes are gonna be safe notes, some are gonna be not so safe, but we made it like that so it's fuller and it's now adapted perfectly to that train track thing. Now there's another thing that's very important. And that's where really, this just really, really helped me. I think it's gonna help you too. We have that pentatonic scale. We don't really have to think about it, right? It's ingrained in our fingers. We've been playing for a little while. We know it, we're fine. Just one position is enough. Now, that frees our concentration, right? We, we are no longer, uh, engaged in the process of trying to remember well, which notes should I play and stuff like that, right? We don't have to worry about that. Instead, we can allocate all this concentration power to, cre to, to creating new things with the taka 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 that guideline. So check this out. Here's my backing track. Now I'm not gonna play all these notes. I'll be really boring, but I'm going to play some of them. Whenever I sing a note or I say a note or play a note, it 
has to fall on one of the rails of the train of the railroad. Okay, now let's play that using our chromaticized pentatonic scale. See what happens. Okay, sounds interesting. It sounds a lot more, to me, it sounds a lot more complex, sophisticated, uh, trained musician-like than it really is. Just pentatonic with that rhythm stuff, right? Okay, there's one more thing that I'll share with you that is really, really cool. Because here I was using the minor pentatonic scale, but this is something that is a little bit counterintuitive. Because we often think that, and we're trained to think that pitches, scales, matching musical elements, which is so important, right, in harmony, is more important than the rhythm. It's actually not. Because I could play the correct notes with poorly done rhythm, it's gonna sound pretty clumsy. I'm gonna play the wrong notes. Now some are gonna be okay, some are gonna be wrong, but with a good focus rhythm thing. Not that it's the best solo in the world, but there is a difference. In my opinion, the second one, which is, um, Wrong notes, I wasn't worried about notes, but focused rhythm sounded to me more in control. Now imagine if you could do both. Good notes, good rhythm control, that's, that's where the magic happens. Um, but it's also very freeing to know that if you rely on a good solid rhythm phrasing foundation, you can allow yourself to hit the wrong notes. And there's a lot of d playing outside. There's different ways to doing that. For example, if we were still in that minor pentatonic scale, G minor pentatonic, that's N. Those are the proper notes. Play that a half step above, out of key, right? Yuck, but slide in and out of it with the glue that we talked about, we're good. Okay, right, makes sense. So that's one way to do it. Take your scale and move it a half step up or a half step below. As long as you have that glue. And so forth. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Just move your scale a half step up or a half step below. And people might think, oh man, like he must know a lot of scales. 
No, <laughs> it's just pentatonic, just move it, right? But with the rhythm thing. Another way is to take a, a cool shape. Now, when I say a cool shape, it's, it's just a shape that you can memorize. So for me, my to-go one is the diagonal thing. Like, I'll start it anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start it. But here, for example, uh, any, any string too. Fourth string, ninth fret, okay? And then third string, eight. Second string, seven. See, it's diagonal, right? You start that anywhere. What if we do it from, we can reverse it too, right? Just diagonal stuff. It doesn't make any sense musically. If I play this over the track, check out my cool solo. Not, no, not really. No. But, we bring in the train. In essence, you could play anything you want. And then I'm back in. It's all about the rhythm, all about that. Now, this can lead to other paths too. We were talking about 16th notes, right? That's in the back of your mind, but what if, you know, that's our beat? Maybe we can inject some triplets. Okay, so let's alternate to the that's the, the train going. And then there's a little bump. Let's try that. For example. Now, when you get started with this, don't feel like you have to It's kind of hard to, to do a long phrase like that, and it doesn't sound that good. Think of it like a, a human. <laughs> so think of it like um, a singer. Can you sing this whole phrase? And I'm not talking about the pitches. I'm talking about the breath. Well, let's try it. <sighs> Running out of breath. And it's a very, very good way, indication that your phrase is too long and the listener is not really going to relate to it. Because um, we love, so I'll stop, we love to hear things that we can recognize. We love simplicity. If there, there's this Donald Miller, like a marketing guy, I think he said that, if you uh, confuse, you lose. It's the same with everything. So it's a good way to do it. Breathe in. As you exhale, Play your phrase, and if you're running out of breath, you're, you stop playing. Good way to practice that is just uh, breathe in, out. You're only playing when you're exhaling. Exhaling. Um, you can make this even simpler by taking a sentence. I talked about that with a few videos. I called the, the love formula, L-O-V-E. L is for lyrical, O obvious, V visual, E expandable. It's besides the point, but the idea is to, you can help yourself with uh, uh, sentences. Um, so come up with a lyric and that'll really help with the train track technique thing. So here's our a backing track. Let's think of a lyric. Some, some lyrics. I'll take suggestions from the audience. Just something simple. Okay, but as long as you resolve, it all works. Ed wrote that. Let's say that. 
the backing track. As long as you resolve, it all works. You can do that. Or, as long as you resolve, it all works. As long as you resolve, it all works. Well, for example, if we're going to say this, we'll just take the first sentence, because I'll, I'll forget. As long as you resolve. As long as you resolve. As long as you resolve. And I'm playing that. I'm thinking of the sentence. As long as you resolve. As long as you resolve. And then you can maybe stutter it. As long as you re 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 resolve. As long as you resolve. Now I'm, I'm no longer saying that phrase, but it, it kind of can help you get it going. <laughs> Missed that one. But the cool thing too is that you can add a lot of percussive things with the with the that technique. When you're when you're singing over it. As long as you resolve. As long as you uh, resolve. Uh, yeah. As long as you resolve. So, things like that can be done with like the ghost notes, you know, like little percussive. You muting things. That sound is, can be part of it. You heard it there, right? That's important. Stop the track for a sec. Please stop. I'm using a pedal here with my foot to control it. It keeps messing up, but... Uh, so instead of doing... No, I started with this little thing, very subtle. S things like that, right? That adds so much. See if you can recognize that. Maybe a percussive thing could be a I, I'm not aiming for anything, I'm just doing a quick. Of effect. So here I was aiming for a pentatonic scale an octave higher. I was playing this one right here. Uh, second string, uh, fret number eight, uh, is it 18? Yeah, 18. But I was aiming for it. It doesn't always work. Sixteenth notes. That's what I'm hearing in my mind. And I know I can play random notes. And so forth. See how rhythm is like literally everything? I, I think, I think we need to change backing tracks <laughs> because this is a, this, this is one of those tracks that is, it's so easy to play that way because it's so groovy. But let's try that with something maybe a little slower, maybe a blues type of thing. By the way, all those backing tracks you can grab, there's, I left a link below. Don't leave now, but after the stream, um, just, just check it out. It's in the description of the video. 
and it's free. You just sign up and you'll grab all those backing tracks for free. But let's try something a little, maybe a little more bluesy and see, see what we can do with it. I'm not, I, hopefully this will work, I don't know. We'll see, but. All right. Definitely slower, right? We're still in G, that's great. Now, what is going to be our railroad like? I don't know if 16th notes is the best. Maybe, maybe that's our trick. Whatever works for you. So I'm gonna use that. You heard that little thing. Just have my, my railroad. And remember to breathe. <gasps> I, I'm not playing a sentence that I can't sing, that I can't breathe out. I don't know if they'll sword. Yeah, I did. <laughs> rhythm. Now I don't know if the outside stuff would work that well on, on a track like this because it's, it's so slow people will have time to uh, remember uh, the notes that I'm playing so I don't know but we should try. If not I, I, I have something. Don't start with it. Oh, I like that. Okay, it did work, but it doesn't work all the time. Like the previous track, which was very rhythm oriented, this one, there's a trick to it. Imagine this time that you're a drummer. And ask yourself, all right, as a drummer, where would I play my fill? I'm not a drummer here, but I would play somewhere here. Turn around. Whenever the drummer would play the fill, you play a fill with them. And your fill is going to be filled with those random notes. With the railroad. We'll try it at the turn around. Now we can play some fills other places, like maybe here. But we'll do it at the, the turnaround. You heard it right. I'm imagining a fill. And so forth. It's in some ways it's a little easier to do it on slower paced stuff. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry. Pardon me. It's a little harder to do it on slower stuff, in some ways. But then it's also slower, so you really can afford there to just really breathe in, say simple sentences, a simple story, and a good way to do it too is just to actually think of the story. So this this can happen without the backing track. A uh, simple story, okay? There is a, a main character. Great. That main character has a problem, so he's going on a, some kind of journey, right? To figure out how to resolve his problem. 
and then resolution. Um, SpongeBob has a problem because his girlfriend has been stolen. So he goes on a journey to this uh, pirate island and fights the pirates and all that. You know, lots of weird stuff happens to SpongeBob. But then he rescues his girlfriend, the princess, and they're happy. What? Okay, let's, let's talk about that musically. <laughs> Here's SpongeBob. So we're G minor pentatonic scale, okay? That's our setting. Um, SpongeBob, the, the main character, is going to be a simple idea that is going to be recurring through the story, okay? Maybe something like... Okay, well, we're going to start the story with our main character. It's the first thing you hear in the story. I want you to understand that this is the hero. So I'm going to make you familiar with it. So maybe I'll introduce SpongeBob again on a different light, so you really understand the character. Right? Maybe adding a few details. Now, Sponge goes on a journey. So I'm going to take Sponge and uh, make him move around different things. Another idea. But it's still Sponge. So you need to bring him back. Okay, that was the story. SpongeBob goes on an adventure, something new happens, and then brings the, the princess. Now I'm going to improvise thinking of that in my head. I'm not going to voice it out, but I'm going to try to think in terms of the story. I'm going to take a few liberties here and there, but, but realize that I'm thinking of a story here and see what happens. So I'm going to let the turnaround happen. So we're in D there, and then back to that G minor. I'm going to try to keep a G minor with the tonic. And you understand that this is important. Something weird happens, but it's all well. Here's another story. I'm repeating that in different lights, right? to develop that, that story there. I'm not jumping from one plot to the next. There's no development. So that's kind of the idea. Thinking in terms of all of those stories is really going to help you um, organize your thoughts when, when you're improvising. Okay, so that is kind of what I, what I wanted to share with you today, the, the, the importance of rhythm phrasing. So how do you get started with that? Well, you start by just throwing in a backing track, listening to the track, thinking of uh, deciding what your rail, railroad is going to look like and sound like, and use that in the back of your mind as you improvise. Let's try a last thing here. Um, I'm going to try another kind of funky thing, and again, this is going to be, although there's about 10 tracks here that you can grab for free if you'd like, um, the link is below, but let's try this one. So let's see what we could do with this. So again, that's my beat. If you engage your body, it's, it's easier. I'm starting to build some ideas in my mind. Now let's say you don't know the key. 
happens quite a bit. Well, two, two tricks. First of all, do you hear a bass or a guitar in there? Yeah. So this sound like it's more of a groovy rhythm thing that is composed by a guitar player or bass player? Or piano? Oh yeah, guitar player. Okay, there's gonna be an E in there. 99% of the time. So let's try an E. If you don't know, just play that E. Yep. And then the other notes, you kind of like um, land on them as you go. But if you have this, you can play anything. So you'll start out a little bit, but eventually you'll land on something, hopefully. Eventually, you'll, you'll quickly know the key. So here, I'm in E Dorian. It's so much fun. It's so much fun and so freeing too. And start simple, think rhythm, and you'll have an endless uh, flow of ideas. For those of you watching the replay, um, you can click right here because right here you can grab all the backing tracks that I've been using in the charts for free. And just grab it right here and practice all that on your own and you'll have tons of fun.